Once all my panels were glued up, I needed to flatten them, but I don't currently own a thickness sander. Lucky for me, I got a buddy across town who does have one. This is Joey Koklis, and here's a little taste of his incredible work. He took me on a little tour of his shop and showed me some of his current projects that he was working on. I'll put some links in the description so you can check out his website and follow him on Instagram. This thing is a beast of a machine, and it's got my kind of accuracy. Check this out. Remember how I said these were the most used machines in my shop? Well, I wasn't kidding. Once I got the flattened panels back to my shop, I cut a bevel into what would become the front edge of the boxes. This is something that I would come to regret for several reasons down the line, but I thought it would look cool. And then I squared up the edges on the crosscut sled I built in the last video. This router bit is called a lock miter bit. It's perfect for certain applications because it makes it a little easier to clamp your miters together. This is the Incra Super Fence. It's an older model, and I actually bought it used about 10 years ago. The company has come out with a new design on this since the one I have. I guess you could say this was kind of the gateway drug to my obsession with Inker products. To create a lock miter, the horizontal panel gets passed over the bit while it's flat against the table, and the other panel needs to be held vertically as it passes over the bit. So this tall fence helps keep the vertical board perfectly vertical. This is the last of many test cuts that I made to make sure everything was dialed in. I probably spent an entire afternoon just messing with all the adjustments until it fit perfectly. Once I got everything dialed in, I set up some feather boards to make sure the stock stayed tight against the fence and table.
I used one of my test pieces as a push stick, but it also prevented tear out in the back of the cut. Next, I moved the feather boards to cut the vertical panels. The first reason I regretted cutting that bevel in the panels earlier is that it meant that I needed to cut a bevel in my zero clearance push blocks as well. So I did my dry fit and realized the main reason I should never have cut those bevels into the front of the panels. It's very subtle, but the way the lock miter comes together, it just doesn't work with the bevel. I'm not exactly sure how to explain it, but maybe you can see it here. I'm using half inch plywood for the back of the boxes. So after carefully measuring the actual thickness of the plywood, I set up my dado blade to cut some grooves. This little guide came with my dado stack as part of the packaging, so I laminated it. After using a test piece to make sure the groove was a good fit, I ran all my panels over the data blade. I've got this nifty little Veritas story stick. They make the hardware, you have to supply the sticks. But if you make yourself a few different sets of sticks, you can use it for just about any size project. I used it to measure the inside of the groove to get the dimensions for my plywood. And finally, I just decided to cut off the bevel. It was just causing too many problems. I'll figure out what I want to do with it later. I had a little cleanup to do on the lock miter joinery before they'd fit together perfectly.
One down and three to go. See you later.